folks, and welcome to another Saturday morning Samo Flange. I'm Matt. And I'm Mikey. And I'm Johnny Bravo. Oh, no. Johnny Bravo's here. All right, well, we're going to go over some of your comments, not questions, it looks like, from a few weeks ago. Brian C. says, Ronin Warriors! Ronin Warriors! <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody to, to join in with all this Eastern talk. That's great. I'm glad we have a Ronin Warriors fan in the house. You do have a... And guess what? what? The Quizmaster. Oh, the Quizmaster's returned. Has returned. Where have you been, man? He says he poly- he's been away. He's been up on a hill meditating. I like how he just doesn't say where he's been. It's no. just, he's, I've been away. He's like Gandalf. He just yeah, disappears for a little away, while yeah. and then joins the fellowship he's later mysterious. on. Uh, Ronin Warriors. He's kind of like, um, he's kind of like the, well, what's his name? Uh, Naraku, like Naraku, 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 the one after he turned into the Watcher and he had the hat with the with the cane and the rings. Ronin Warriors fan will know what I'm talking about. I have no idea what you're yeah. saying. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> you lost me after he, Ronin. <laughs> he says, uh, are we fans of favorite old horror movies? Well, there's a, there's a couple ways to answer this question. Number one, we could really answer it. Or number two, we could say, stay tuned. Yeah, stay we will tuned. Talk that. Hey, we all love horror movies, and we haven't talked about them for a reason, because when the time comes, you will get a horror movie explosion all over your mm, face. Explosion. Right. And then Michael asked me if I've seen the Nostalgia Critic, uh, who talks about some of these cartoons, including the Ewoks cartoon, and no, I have not. Have y'all seen the Nostalgia Critic? I have not. No, I'll have to check him out. Uh, David says, uh, an honorable mention for him would be the Kids Superpower Hour with Shazam. Huh. So like that, like, 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 the Shaq? Shazam? Like Shaq? Like, I don't know. <laughs> like the <laughs> whole old like 90s movie? I don't know. Did Shaq have a cartoon? Well, he had that movie. Yeah, he, he had that movie. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Capitalize on Robin Williams' genie. Anyway, he also says to Grundle that it was uh, Mobile Armor Strike Command. Oh no, this would would have been Step. This would be Step Daddy. Uh, but then he says Venom stands for Vicious Evil Network of Mayhem. (laughs) Yes. And then he also says he would have loved to hear the subject, uh, the segment where we we went off track after Thundercats. And no, you would not. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there was a good 20 minutes there that got cut. (laughs) I could end this entire thing and say the one word that you need to look up, but I can't say it. But that one word is all you need to know. (laughs) Maybe we can arrive at a venue where that sort of uh, off-track band, off-off the beaten path kind of banter. Sounds like Thundercats. Okay, so Brian C. says, talk about 90s shows now. Brian C., your wish is our command. Folks, like Shinrod in Dragon Ball Z! (laughs) Your wish has been granted. You know what, though? You kind of look Dragon Ball Z-ish today. Okay, (laughs) I I wonder why. (laughs) 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 I'm like, why do you have on like a bright orange (laughs) (laughs) V-neck? Now I know. He came prepared. Dragon! Alright, folks. There is a consensus here that we know what number one is. So we're going to give you number six through number two and then talk about about number one. What are we talking about, Matt? 90s cartoons. Okay, and we're going to let you go first since 90s is your generation. Okay, well, I'll pick one because I'm kind of like Mikey last week. I don't really have an order. I've just got all number one. All right, give me your first number one. I'm going to start with uh, with today's namesake. I'm going to start with Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo. I adore Johnny Bravo. He's a good one. And what's really great about and I was talking I was talking with uh, with the wife about this. You like the first half or the second half. And there's it's actually surprising how many people like the first half as opposed to the second and vice versa. I'm a fan of the first half. Uh, because I thought the I liked the animation better and I thought the humor was was more I thought the humor was more mature in the first half. And you had more guest stars like Donny Osmond and Adam West and Farrah Wait, Fawcett. wait, 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 wait. Hold on, time out. The very first guest star you name is Donny Osmond? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch this show more often. Let me tell you something. No, he comes over to be um, Johnny Bravo's babysitter. Oh, man. Because his mom leaves him, and he's like this Mary Poppins like babysitter. <laughs> I wish Donny Osmond was my babysitter. Dude, it's so great. <laughs> I won't give away the end of the episode, but the end of the episode is just money. <laughs> I never liked Johnny Bravo. I have to be honest with you. And I don't, oh, I, I loved him. I don't know what it was. I think maybe uh, being such a Seinfeld fan that I felt that he was such like a putty ripoff. 
Um, and I think at that time, it just kind of bothered That's me. That's an interesting take. I, I don't know. That I, is it, interesting. It was in his voice. It was, mm. you know, and I, and I don't, huh. it wasn't voiced by the same character, but no. I think he just capitalized. He does voice cartoon characters, though. He does, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he he's, he voiced he's, Kronk, yeah. which was fantastic. Yes. The uh, but there was just something Kronk. about that character that made me think, man, that's just kind of like a putty ripoff. And at that time, I was being kind of snobbish, and I was like, mm, I think that. you're the only person in the world who thought that. I never would have made that's that. That's interesting. I don't know why. But like, you know I can see where but you made it. Let me tell it, you what's funny about that. Have you ever watched Adventure Brothers? No. He plays a giant, hulking, blonde, muscle-bound creature. Oh, well, there you Brock go. Brock Samson. And that is oh, actually his voice. I like that name. Adventure Brothers is actually one of the best cartoons ever, but we'll, we'll cover that in a later segment. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to pick Johnny Bravo. Great nostalgia value for me. I, I love the show. Years later, when he brings Rock Samson Steel into the studio, you're going to know where he got the name. Yes. <laughs> Come here, Rock Samson. He's going to hear on first and middle name. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Number six. Me? Number six? Uh, my number six 90s cartoon is the Ace Ventura cartoon. Ace wow. Ventura. Hey. Ace Ventura. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that, that um, would be on the misses. Was that on five. the Fox cart? Was that on the Fox Kids segment? I don't remember it? where. I don't it remember. Was, to be honest with you, it made them. Uh, there was very short lived, but I liked it for reasons that we've already talked about. I love Jim Carrey. I love Ace Ventura. Um, he did not voice the character, obviously, no, but the guy that voiced him did a great job. It, it, he didn't go over the top and make it like this kind of cheese, super cheesy caricature. But it kind of sounded like him, and it, sometimes it made you wonder, man, is that really him? So he did like this really good impression, and I just thought it was funny, you know, like it it, it really captured the uh, essence of yeah. what Ace Ventura was, and it was just bizarre and goofy. And at that time, uh, you know, I, I I had to watch every episode. I loved it. I All think right. that's the best way to go if you're not going to get the actual star of the movie. If you're going to get a voice actor to be the uh, you know the character inspired by the movie, don't try to be just like him. And, you know right. what I mean? Like, and it speaks a lot that it's in your top five because a movie based off an ex. I I mean, a cartoon based off an excellent movie, it, to hold its own is is, is uh, yeah. making. I a don't know if other people like that. It's I just, like. I, it. I, I like. I'm such a fan of uh, Jim Carrey, yeah. but then I'm also a fan of Ace Ventura, the character. I just think that yeah. whole but gimmick you, is funny. But did you watch the Mask cartoon at all? Did you watch any of that? No. It wasn't as good as the Ace Ventura cartoon. No. Yeah, I mean, I like the movie, The Mask, no, but I love the, the but movie. but the character, like you know, whereas Ace Ventura, I think the character is funny, and I just think like you know that whole concept of being a pet detective with the mask eh. like there wasn't anything yeah. there besides Jim Carrey that made me say oh this is kind of a funny character that I'd like to watch in cartoon yep. form right. uh, my number five Grundle knows because I told him earlier uh, before the podcast started is Terrible Thunder Lizard Jen. Jen. I've Jen. never seen it episode. came on the same time as Jen. Eat the Cat Jen. and Eat the Cat was good Terrible Thunder Lizards was better Yeah, three dinosaurs going out to uh uh, put man into extinction. There's only two more man, men left, cavemen, and they're trying to destroy them with bee bombs yeah. and bee grenades. But unfortunately, the humans just keep living. But they don't even know they're being hunted. Cause there's these dumb cavemen. Right. Bill and I can't remember what the other I one's name is. Name Bill, I have a great idea. It's like we call it the wheel, you know, or so, or say so he's he's inventing something that's modern day. Every time, that's but it's, it was really, really, yeah. and the terrible thunder lizards are hilarious. You know what's funny about the terrible thunder lizards is, you know, I grew up, I watched that when I was a kid, and when I got into like anatomy class later on in, in school, I was like, hold on a second, they don't need to hunt these guys because there's no women to breed <laughs> them. They're going to die anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> there are no women there, just the two of them. But so. anyways, no. What's funny about uh, Bill is he reminds us of one of our friends, Rick Miller, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll have to watch the show again now. That, uh, that, uh, <laughs> oh man! But that would that would definitely be uh, in my top five, uh, regardless. I, there, I think there are a lot of other good '90s cartoons. Oh, but that a, one just there's a it, it, load of them. It, it it takes the cake over that. So that's number. Excuse me, number six. For number me. six. That's so right. now we're at number five. Okay. Well, I'm not going to call this five. It's just a one that I happen to put at that spot. Your next number one. Um, the. The 90s, gentlemen, were just the pinnacle of cartoons for me. <sighs> and I'll pick another one. <laughs> um, Dexter's Laboratory. There you go. Now that's a cartoon. Love Dexter's Laboratory. 
Okay, so what did you like about Dexter's What's not to like about Dexter's Laboratory? Uh, it was That's another true. part of that cartoon cartoon. Stop um, it, Dee Dee! Yeah. Uh, you're in my laboratory! He was this weird, like, little Romanian kid. But, <laughs> That's like, what actually made it funny. Yeah. yeah. I, do, I, I think without the accent, I wouldn't have enjoyed that. No, it would that. not. That's what's so funny. I would it not have enjoyed character. that. You would, all not, all you character. would not have cared. You're exactly right. You would not have cared about Dexter or his laboratory if he wouldn't have talked like a little Romanian kid. That's true. That's true. You wouldn't have cared. I, I, I 100% agree with that. But, uh, no, it was, I, I loved it. And, and he had the, it's another one of those. They had a later series. There was the animation changed and the early series, the part of the series. The early part of the series was far superior to the later one. The later one was not funny to me, and he's got a different voice actor. And that will change things for me. If you get a different voice actor, I'll stop watching. If I don't like the voice actor, I will stop watching. Okay. But yeah. uh, Dexter's Laboratory, what I loved about it is it was just part of my routine. The cartoon cartoon um, little branch there, which, you know, had a, its alumni was like, was it Johnny Bravo, Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Laboratory, uh, Gendy Tartakovsky, and um, and uh, Van Partible. They were the ones that were kind of doing all that stuff in the cartoon cartoon phase of Cartoon Network. So you haven't talked about Powerpuff Girls yet. Is that a spoiler alert? Oh, no. I, I, Powerpuff Girls, I mean, I can mention Powerpuff Girls. I, li I liked Powerpuff Girls. I watched it. Number five. Oh, number five for me. I think that all of us would agree that this could con be considered a cartoon of the 90s, and that would be the reinvention of Space Ghost. Dude, that's on my list, too. Let's talk about it. That would be my number five, I think. I was so scared. I thought you were going to talk about Reboot. Uh, what is that? You don't remember Reboot? No. Oh, but don't worry, we're talking about it. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. It's terrible. Reboots. But I mean, wouldn't y'all agree that Space Ghost is a cartoon? Space I mean, Ghost, it's all cartoon except for... Space Ghost uh, Coast to Coast is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end of The Mask, because I have The Mask on VHS and I watched it until it wore out. But at the end of it, Jim Carrey guest starred on Space Ghost. He did, and it's fantastic. It's I one love of my it. favorite ones. I loved know? it. Uh, I just, I don't know. There was so much stuff about that that was funny. I'm sure that the people that listen to this podcast have all watched copious amounts of Space Ghost. Um, mm -hmm. It just made me happy. I love the talk show premise. Uh, I don't even remember any of their names, but just, it was just, it was it was really good editing. It was really clever with the uh, the way that they edited the comedy back and forth. Yeah. I love the, the, the moments of silence where it's just... Yeah, them looking at each yeah, other. Yeah, and every time they flashed the Zorak, you'd hear, like, you know, the locust or crickets yeah. or whatever. And yeah. Multar sounded like They just like kind of a, stare at each other. And just, mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Like, that's good comedy to me. Uh, and it was always kind of it funny was. to see what type of, like, guests would show up. Um, and, yeah, and Obi was on there once. <laughs> and it was kind of neat because, like, at that time, you know, like, that was probably a relatively new concept for these people to just uh, be pretending to be on a guest show with cartoons. Right. And there were a lot of people on there that, you know, really made fun of themselves. Like, I remember there was one with Bjork on there. Yeah, Bajor yeah there was. Bjork, as I call her. <laughs> and, like, she was just, like, as goofy as could be. Yeah. But they were right there with her, and she was right there with them. And I was like, man, I gained a lot of respect for her after Macho that. Macho Man Randy Savage was on Space Ghost. Was he? Ghost. I don't know if I've ever seen that one. He maybe I haven't that, forgotten. Yeah, Raven Simone was the guest star on, that talked on that one. And Macho Man was Space Ghost's dad. And Space Ghost's name in Space Ghost Coast to Coast was Tad. His name was Tad. So he came on there and he was getting on to him for be not being tough. And she smarted off to him and he's like, Oh, don't you smart off to me. I'll put you in a rolling DDT that'll send you crying home to mommy, little missy. And then it was it was great. He took a chair to Zorak, Moltar's being a, a commentator. It was a wrestling episode. Love it. It, it was best. So that's well, my and, number five. And that's why, in fact, that basically was part of the reinvention of Cartoon Network. Which and, was yeah. trying to establish an identity back then. And it was making it okay for adults to, to join in and like cartoons. It's where Adult Swim came in. Exactly. Ghost yeah. Planet Industries kind of kind of paved right. the way for all that. No, I agree. Good pick. My number five would be the Daring Duck of Mystery. Oh. Champion of Night. Sneaks out of the shadows. Darkwing. Of the night. If you're in trouble, you... Well, you call DW. Exactly. That's what you do. <laughs> Three, two, four. Darkwing Duck. I yes. love... <laughs> yeah. I left that off my list because I knew that it was one of yours. Darkwing Duck was when Disney Afternoons kept coming out. And I think they all hit home runs. They did. Each one got better Chip and Dale, than great. the last. Chip and Dale's great. Didn't Tailspin, hate. great. Yeah, was Tailspin before or after Darkwing Duck? It was around, Tailspin it was, was before it was Darkwing Duck, before. and it, it would be an honorable mention for me because yeah. I love Tailspin. Tailspin was awesome. Yeah, it was. But Darkwing that, Duck right. beat it. Leo. Tailspin. I, 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 I tell you, there's nothing bad about t Tailspin. Nothing bad about that. I love, that was my favorite one until Darkwing Duck came Darkwing out. Darkwing Duck was And awesome. then Darkwing Duck came out. 
and it was fantastic. I've ne- I don't remember the episode, but I do know there was a Twin Peaks spoof in Darkwing Duck called Twin Beaks. Oh yeah, and oh I yeah. To, they I need to go watch that because I, 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 I missed really, that Really, really smart cartoon. A lot of fun. Doesn't hold up today though. Really, I haven't watched. Don't that really watch it. It's not it's as good. Funny you mention that because I did. Because better has come out now. Better has proceeded. Cartoons have evolved, and we'll talk more about. My wife that later was a on. huge fan of, of DW. And of I course, bought, I bought and her, I still uh, love Darkwing Duck. I bought I her. A, was good. I bought her. Uh, you know the series, and uh, we oh, watched right. a couple episodes, and we we're like. Uh, yeah, yeah, it loses some. It's not as good as it used to be. It doesn't hold up as much. But still, yeah. But still, for what it's worth, oh, I still love me absolutely. some Darkwing Duck. All right, so number four. Okay, uh, this isn't going to be on my list, but I just want to make. Does anyone remember Two Stupid Dogs? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, all right. I don't know. Love is that, two is that, dogs. Is that your next one? No, no. I just wanted to mention that real quick. <laughs> He's going to mention Tasmania next. Don't in Tasmania. Do you not like Tasmania? Tasmania? What do you mean? You. Come to Tasmania. Uh, <laughs> you have to remember. What that, you have to remember is Tasmania on there? Yeah, it is somewhere, yeah. Is it an honorable mention? Because I have it as an honorable mention. Though. It is a mention. I don't okay, know. I've, got so a, I've just got a smash. Tasmania. They made a show about a character who no, never even speaks, but then gave him his own show and it worked. Yeah, except for Bushwhacker Bob. Bushwhacker Bob talked. Oh, no, no. I know. He did, but it was great. Um, uh, No, I was going to mention Gargoyles, actually. Oh, you did like Gargoyles. That's a cool show, actually. Yes, is, Never man. saw Gargoyles. It is. It's very smart, actually. And you don't know it when you're a kid, but you go back and you watch it, because like, there's like there's Shakespeare in it. There's It's a smart show. <laughs> but it's very cool, and the toys were badass. <laughs> Remember going to KB Toys and picking up a Goliath figure with like, arm cannons? KB Toys. Holy wow. crow. Wow. Wow. Uh, Want to mention okay. Gargoyles? Love Gargoyles. Gargoyles. All right, so my number four is um, uh, <laughs> whoa, uh, uh, blew me. Uh, hey, Beavis. <laughs> hey, uh, wh- wh- why did you drink my last Coke, there, Beavis? I didn't drink your last Coke. It spilled. Shut up, bunkhole. Don't call me a bunkhole, butthead. You're just jealous because you have a small ding dong. Oh, oh. Hey, uh, uh, look, hey, look, Beavis, Beavis, look, look on the TV. There's boobies. Boobs. <laughs> Boobs. <laughs> wow. I love Beavis and Butthead. I'm telling you, all right. See, now here's the difference in between the ages. Wow. Now, CJ is really the 90s guy, right? He's the 90s, uh... Uh, cartoon guy because of the age difference in between us. I watched some cartoons during the 90s, mm-hmm. but he that he's spouting out all of this stuff that that mm-hmm. we didn't watch. You know, we watched a lot of popular stuff, maybe a little bit of older type stuff. CJ knows all, all the all the 80s stuff that me and you know, Matt, all yeah. the little intricacies. He knows all he the knows 90s. He knows about the 90s yeah, that we don't know. That's why he's like two stupid dogs and me and you were like, yeah, like I was in college at that time. <laughs> but Beavis and Butthead, early 90s, like 92, 93, I was 13, 14 years old. Those guys hit, I'm a little 13, 14 year old little hellion myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Beavis and Butthead loved everything about them. It was. Dude. It came at a perfect time when Rebellion <laughs> and Grunge and MTV were just like running amok. Uh, censorship for like video games and things were like, you know, so it was like at that time when you were a teenager, you're like rebel, rebel, <laughs> rebel. And those dudes led the charge. I mean, they parents did. and adults hated them. Yes, they did. But you know, was my mom and dad actually took me to watch Beavis and Butthead do America. Wow. I don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, leave it. <laughs> but you know, I loved in that movie when when uh, Hank Hill, who was on Beavis and Butthead before he got yeah, his spin off, right. He was yeah. in his RV and they were at the, uh, I guess it wasn't the Grand Canyon, but it's when they busted open the Hoover Dam or whatever. And he's like, this was God's country. And all of a sudden that flood comes down and washes him away. <laughs> <laughs> You've been whacking off in my tool shed. I thought I'd catch you a whacking in my tool shed. 
<laughs> I love I love the format of that show though. Like I still actually will crack up at that show. I don't know if I crack up uh, of it because it's funny to me these days or because of nostalgia. Probably more nostalgia uh, because it's such a sign of the times. I mean, it's so dated. It is. And they did try to bring it back. And I did watch some of the newer episodes. I was gonna say, did you watch the newer? And episodes? they were okay. I liked like, them. Yeah, yeah I funny. liked them. I watched them all. I thought they were good. Yeah. Um, I laughed. And it, yeah, there's just something, but but once again, it's like, is it that 13 year old boy that's forever inside of me that's laughing, or or is this really funny to kids today? I, I don't the know. The thing I was afraid of is they were going to try to make them newer and make them just a bit more edgy or whatever. They didn't. They, and were they still just the same people. They go in perfect uh, sync with the rest of the because they analyze videos too in the middle yeah. of it. And they just kept them the same. So they fit in perfect essence with the rest of the series. So you could watch it all the way through and go, okay, they're just looking at newer videos, but the right. concept very, is the same. It was that's very what, juvenile MST. I that's, loved it. That's one of I my very it. favorite parts of that show. And then the, and the later episodes, they cut that out. But I love whenever they're you know watching the videos and I just love making fun yeah. like flipping through the TV. Like that's what's And that's what they me. did. They brought that back in the newer season. Yeah, which they're was sitting there good. watching California Love. And talk like about it. it. Yeah. Da, 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 and, da, 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 da. and funny. Being funny. It's they hilarious. Funny. Their comments about on the music videos are Because hilarious. a lot of times though, like they, it's like they would say the things that you were thinking. Like these just very like brash kind of like they would come across like, you know, an old run DMC or yes. like a, mm-hmm. a David Lee Roth oh, video or something. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. And they're like, uh what is this crap? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's exactly what I'd be thinking as a kid, like, what is this crap? <laughs> All right, ruining America for all of the kids of the '90s, Beavis and Butthead. Wow, my number four. It's tiny, it's toony, and they're all oh, a, a little, little loony. loony. And in this cartoony, they're invading <laughs> your TV. That's my number three. So that's my next one too. Oh, that's so your next one too. Let's yeah. talk about it because they're comic dispensers. They crack up all the sensors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Tiny Toon Adventures get a dose of comedy. At Acme University, they earn their Toon degree. Yes. That's right. <laughs> the teachers act on getting racked. It's time for you and me or something. We're tiny. We're toony. We're all a little loony. <laughs> tiny Toon Adventures. It's about to start. Dun 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 dun. dun. And now. And if you want to talk about Beavis pop. and Butthead, like uh, ruining America, uh, Tiny Toons annoyed adults because it was <laughs> yeah. so. Funny fast and so it was witty it was great this is when they start taking uh today the common culture jokes like jokes that were going on in hollywood yes they knew that their their audience was growing up and they were getting the the jokes were getting a little bit more funnier or a little bit more highbrow they were taking uh like i said common things that were going on do you remember uh the girl sean whatever she wanted to be catwoman and burton's Batman Returns, and so she dressed up as Catwoman on a talk show yeah. and begged the camera to the camera, begged Tim Burton to make her Catwoman. I can't remember her last name. Know. She was in a lot of eighty. She was in Ace Ventura. Oh, Sean uh, Young. Sean Young. That was her. Well, in in one of the Tiny Toons adventures, there's a girl that pops out. There's a Batman adventure in there, and there's a girl that pops out. I want to be Catwoman. Why can't I be Catwoman? Look, I look great in a Catwoman dress. And then they hit her with a mallet, and they go, "Shut up." But that was Sean Young, and if you don't, if you were, if you don't even remember that, that cartoon is going to be losing a lot of people. But they took the risk, and they went ahead and said, "It's going to pay off right now to our audience." Well, and it did because you would laugh because you remembered that just happened. Here's what happened with Tiny Toons, and, and and how that's so good, and the reason why that is, is because they did not make. I mean, they made a newer cartoon, but. Since it's Warner Brothers, since it's Looney Tunes, since it's these, you know, characters, younger mm-hmm. versions of these characters uh, that were established in the 40s and the 50s, what made that cartoon so great is that they did not tr- really try to make these cartoons, like, newer and edgier and yada, yada, yada. They just made the same type of cartoon in the 90s that they made in the 40s because all of those old Warner Brothers Looney Tunes cartoons That's true. were That's that true. way. They used the same uh, they great knock off orchestra the... score and they knock off pop yes. culture. Pop exactly. culture. That's How many true. of those old cartoons, they are, they're, all they do, they're always spoofing Humphrey Bogart, yes, Catherine right. Hepburn, Every movies time. of the time. Right. It's the same concept. That's and they true, just except they went forward. today. Yeah. yeah. And they, now, and, they did get a little edgy. Well, did anyone ever see the uh, band? Cartoon that never came out in the U.S. No, we talked about from Tiny Tunes. I did not. Called One Beer. Mm-mm. No, I never saw that. It's an episode where they're about they're teaching kids about drinking and stuff. And yeah. It's bad and everything. Well, they all find uh, Buster and his friends. They find a, one beer in the fridge and they drink a cold one. 
And so after all drinking cold, when they're drunk the entire episode, they think they're so cool, but of course the girls think they're ugh, they smell awful, they're not, they're all drunk and nasty, they got flies around them. Then they steal a cop car, go, uh, go drive and off and drive off a cliff and die. Because you don't drink and drive, that kills you. Wow. And even Buster makes the joke, he's like, Buster, this is so unlikely. He's like, yeah, but this is an episode about, you know, the dangers of alcohol. Ah! <laughs> and it makes, you know, make, you know how they kind of talk to the, break down the fourth wall there. Yeah, they were constantly doing but that. But the thing is, though, they would not, the censors would not let them air that cartoon Damn. because, you know, it's yeah. cartoon characters drinking a beer. I get it, but you know what, at the same <clears throat> time, like... So, if older cartoons, uh, people would drink. Like you'd see, like you know, like Bugs Bunny. It's like the, it's like the, gra- the it's like yeah. Nobody no. knows how dry I am. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like the grandfather clause for those. Right. But for some reason, the censors were so tight back then, and you wonder how yeah. that got away with it. But and, they just well, said, this is a cartoon because yeah. the because Fred Flintstone used to smoke. Well, because a lot of times yeah, those, those cartoons back in the day weren't necessarily made for kids. Well, and speaking true. of censorship, if you go back and you watch the Spider-Man series that aired on Fox, Spider-Man doesn't punch anybody. Really? He gets choked. He gets thrown. He web slings. Does not punch. Now, I'm going to go back and watch some more, but I've been reading about this and talking with my brother-in-law about it. But hmm. we've been watching and looking back through the Spider-Man. He, no one punches anybody. <laughs> and you know what? If there's one reason I watch Spider Man, it's for them dad gum punches. Damn it! Spider punches. I That's need right. them all awesome no, uh, punch. But Warner Brothers was really awesome uh, for making a lot of other cartoons that weren't just Tiny Toons that were geared more toward adults. And you're looking at, and I'll go ahead and mention these, but you're mention, you're looking at Freakazoid, Animaniacs, and Hysteria. Mm-hmm. Spielberg was making some of the best cartoons. And I wish he would make more. That All right, so what's your good. what's your next one? You're number three now? That'd be number three. Oh, my God, this is so tough. Um, Beast Wars. We'll go ahead and do Beast Wars. Beast Wars. Loved Beast Wars. We talked. We talked, We talked. touched on that last week. Yeah. Um, on the last podcast, Beast Wars. A uh, continuation of Transformers, and it is really cool how it, it is. It, you can go back and watch the end of Transformers, and it'll pick up with Beast Wars. Uh, you can go watch it and see how that turns out. But Beast Wars was very cool. 3D cartoons were not a big deal back then. They weren't like a, a commonplace thing. So right. to see Beast Wars come out, and video games weren't even there yet. Video games, like you had PlayStation and you had Nintendo 64, mm-hmm. which were looking good. But, you know, video games weren't even at that. If I had a video game like on a PlayStation that looked like Beast Wars, I mean, you know, I would have been, you know, flipping my lid. But right. you didn't have anything that looked that good. So, I mean, when video games were str- where we were wanting to see games go 3D and Beast Wars came out, it was just it was it was a wow factor for me. Yeah, you've been sliding down the stairs on your back instead of your stomach. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I didn't have stairs when I was when I was older, but yeah, my number three is actually probably going to be your number two now. Well, so we may as well talk about if, it. If, if you want to open that can of worms, I feel like we should. Okay, it's Animaniacs. Da, 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 da. It <laughs> okay, it is Animaniacs took took tiny jumped off the shoulders of Tiny Toons and did even better. Okay, look, Animaniacs. That's a Spielberg. It is. And it is one of the best cartoons ever. <laughs> it's fantastic. I'm actually going to... See, the reason why... Okay, so this is your number three. I We all agreed that we were going to have the same number one. So right. I am following suit. But in all honesty, Animaniacs is my number one show of the 90s. <clears throat> like, I'm not going to mess with the format, but for me, like right now, and we will get to, okay. like, we'll get to what we're going to talk about when we get to number one. Because I can't disagree with that number one. But... Right now, actually, at any point in my life, if somebody says, would you rather watch an episode of this or would you rather watch an episode of Animaniacs, 99 out of 100 times, I would say Animaniacs. I love Animaniacs. Just because it's me. So you go, since it's your topic now, you go ahead and no, start no, it off. No, no, no. We can start talking about it, but this, even, even the spinoff shows were good. Uh, Pinky good, and the Brain. Yeah, Pinky, Pinky and the Brain. brain good Feathers. Mm-hmm. Good Feathers. Mm-hmm. Which I really yeah, enjoyed. The birds on the street looking. I really street enjoyed that. I didn't the like the older squirrel, even though she was oh, funny. Uh, Slappy yeah. Squirrel. Slappy, Slappy Squirrel was probably the least favorite, but that she was still good. I watched. But she was my about, least uh, favorite side Rita, cartoon. Rita and Runt almost got big enough to have a spinoff. Yeah, but but Pinky and the Brain was Pinky on par brain, with anything else. Sure and Good better. Feathers for me was I, I love to see Good Feathers. So they, they even their spinoffs in. were good, but Animaniacs the the music was smart, 
I, I loved everything about that show. But y'all go ahead and t- talk about it. It's your well, the re- yeah, the, the reason why I would make it my number one of the 90s is for all the na- all the things that you mentioned. But it's just a throwback to the old cartoons. I mean, Tiny Toons was right. that. But it's, for me, I thought that Animaniacs, like you said, just did it a little bit better. Like, yeah. it, it, it took this wonderful idea of, like, instead of, like, these kids being, like, the youth of the 90s, it was these old vaudeville uh, characters from the 30s yes. being transformed in Absolutely. the day. So they were able to, like, marry both of those right. worlds. Which but when genius. But when you watch Hello. the cartoons... Yeah. Yes. Mwah. Good night, everybody. I used to say that when I was a kid. Hello, yeah, nurse. like, it was yeah. so quotable. But the exact same reasons that you said about Tiny Toons uh, that we talked about with the um, pop culture, that's, right. oh my gosh, Animaniacs was pop culture uh, was. through and through. Like, and it was quick and it was fast and either you got the joke or you didn't. You didn't, right. But it was clever, it was funny, it was neat. Um, it, the voice acting was second to none. But what I love almost the most about it, and me and you touched on this a little bit last week, was that this show... Dare I say it was educational at times? Yeah, like I'm glad you said that. The the world, yeah, uh, Yakko's world song, uh, uh, the, yeah. the capitals, the capitals, the capitals. Yeah. That was yeah. Wacko doing that. Well, I was and, when I was and in the president's was, song. Yeah, like, you learn. You, the, I was learning the capitals at the same time he was doing that song, and I was trying to learn the song, and it helped. They put a lot yeah, of work into that test into Thanks, making Yakko. these like three or like four minute songs that you know kids could learn, and mm-hmm. they took seriously, and they made it funny. But I just don't think you would see that today. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I don't watch cartoons today. But, like, I have never seen, like, a YouTube clip of, like, a cartoon today, like, you know, talking about all the presidents and naming them no. in a funny way. Right. Or the capitals and the states and stuff, right. you know. And then they had Wacko's Burp Song, which was great. Yeah, you know. But <laughs> it, it was just funny. It was... Uh, I have the CD of Animaniacs, actually. If you I want to listen to that. Yeah. I like the way that... It, uh, all three... To me, like, yeah, Good Feathers was funny. Pinky and the Brain was funny. These are all of great course. characters. But... The Yakko, Wacko, and Dot are just absolutely like, phenomenal. They're fantastic. When they're, when they're fighting over who's... There's an episode where all the... Uh, when it Freakazoid shows up, and they're all fighting over who's Spielberg's favorite. Yeah. I love that like, episode. That's funny. And then there's this one... You know, you know what I'm talking about? Their jokes are fast, and, and you know you either get them or you don't. There's one where they're detectives, and they talk about fingerprints, and Dot's got prints in her yeah. hand. <laughs> she goes and she picks up prints, and he's like, no, fingerprints. And then Prince kind of looks at her and smiles, like, and then she goes... Uh, no. <laughs> they like throws him out. Throws him out like the door. It was like, uh-uh. That's a move, Louisiana, Indianapolis, Indiana. And Columbus is the capital of Ohio. There's Montgomery, Alabama, south of Helena, Montana. Then there's Denver, Colorado, under Boise, Idaho. Texas has Austin, then we go north. To Massachusetts, Boston, and Albany, New York. Tallahassee, Florida, and Washington, D.C. Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Nashville, Tennessee. Elvis used to hang out there a lot, you know. It was funny because they tried to make Wacko sound like one of the Beatles. It was so Unbelievable how smart that mm. is. So... Good pick all around. Yep. What is your number two? Oh, boy. Okay. Um, Pokemon. If you are a child of the 90s, you ate this up like Oreo O's. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that's the funniest wow. thing the day. And Dunkaroos. Wow. Mm. Um, Pokemon, I mean, let's face it. That was the the biggest, like, one, two. It was huge. It yeah. was the biggest one, two, dare I say, three punch right. combo of anything. First you had, okay. So you had the games that came out from Nintendo for the Game Boy. All right? And Game Boy is already one of the biggest things in the 90s. Dude, those things still to this day. Like, they still hold special, up. I mean, the Pokemon games for the original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Like, there's a million of them. They're still worth a little bit of money. Like, not worth a lot, a lot. But, like, you still have to pay $15, $20, $25 for <laughs> games that are, like, 20 years old. Yeah. That's ridiculous. But if you find, like, a special edition, like, certain Pokemon, yes. like, DS and things... Thousands of yes. dollars. So you had the game that came out. My brother and I were heavy into this. He got the red version. I got the blue version. And we, you know, we played it on the Game Boy. Well, then the show comes out. You know, and and it's and it's this this little anime Pokemon comes out. He's got his little friend Pikachu. So then you have a different level of fandom. He's bonded with the Pokemon. So then they release another game called Pokemon Yellow that actually gives you a Pikachu that follows you around. As if that wasn't enough. They come out with a Pokemon card battle game. All right, Pokemon dominated America for a good yeah. eight, like six, seven years it at did. least, and it's still going strong with the games from Nintendo. It but did. this absolutely occupied 
it, it, more than half of your day. If you weren't checking out and trading the cards, you were playing the game or you were watching the show. It was just one of the biggest, like, just it, it most, like, invasive entertainment-wise. And you just you ate things it up. From, things from Japan interest me, like, uh, well, specifically if you're talking about Pokemon and cartoons and that sort of stuff. Because... <clears throat> It seems like they have, I mean, it's very, it's always very uh, trendy like that where something gets, I, I suppose that they're big over there. Oh, know? yeah. Oh, it right, is. Right? Yeah. And America doesn't know anything about it. And then like a year or two or three later or whatever, like it hits America mm -hmm. and it's crazy. But it seems like, and you can help me out with some of these, but like even if you go back, like you were talking about like Mobile Suit Gundam in the 80s, you get to like Pokemon in the 90s and then there was like uh, when Dragon Ball Z was kind of that way, Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. Well, yeah, well, I'm going to talk uh, about that in a there's bit, some, yeah. Isn't there something else? There's another one that was like, uh, what's that other one that maybe kind of new that's kind of super trendy? I don't know. Oh, well, the Attack on Titan's a big one right now. But there's, it's funny how like, you know, it almost seems like, and I don't know anything about like how big it is over there, I assume. Like I said, it is, but it's funny how like it gets over here and then it just explodes and it's like everywhere. It blows up hard, dude. Everywhere yeah. and just kids eat it up and parents' wallets yeah. suffer. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I it was it, there's no denying how big a phenomenon it was and still is today. It still is a big but thing. its impact in the '90s was everywhere. It won't, it won't everywhere. be that big again. But well, no. No. do you think that Pokemon is the biggest? Do you think Pokemon is bigger than Dragon Ball Z's in America? I will say this only I because... Say, well, I think so. But here's the thing, so. though. Dragon Ball Z's kind of going through a renaissance right now. Uh, no. Because they just released two new movies and they're getting a new series. Yeah. It's it debatable. Because, I, I, because here's the thing. Dragon Ball Z's actually outsold Furious 7 in other parts of, you know, the world. How right does, now. Wait, and how does that make you feel? Dude, that's the most conflicted I've been in a long time. <laughs> I, know, like, I, know. I mean, when I wake up in the morning, life is simple. I get up, I go to work, do I have coffee, do I have a Pop-Tart, do I have cereal? I make those decisions quick. But do I think that Furious 7 deserves more credit at the box office than a Dragon Ball Z movie? My head might literally explode. I don't know if you can ask me that. Man, I don't know. Alright, so my number two is a character who does his battle call on, as one word Spoon The Tick Yes! Which is Patrick Warburton I, and you Which know is what? Putty Key. There you go right. And I love love the Tick cartoon I love the Tick I Key. love everything about the Tick cartoon <laughs> Not in the face That's, yeah. that's Arthur's <laughs> yeah. Arthur. war call It's not the face It's battle cry Yeah <laughs> But it is phenomenal. That cartoon is still hilarious. It still holds up. Today, man. still holds up and is much smarter than I remembered it. It is much smarter. It was part of that interesting little niche of cartoons coming through the Comedy Central with Duckman and the Critic. It, you know, and uh, Dr. Katz. Oh, it Dr. was Katz. so, it was such a good cartoon. I love it. I, I want to watch it again. Yeah, it's a great show. Uh, making tick. this list together, the Tick is something I'm going to watch again because I just love, absolutely love the Tick. Everything. Did you watch the Tick? I have never watched it, as in uh, watched it, watched it. But I have. I, I have seen an episode. I think you would love. Or two. I think you would love the Tick. It's, make, watch it's it. a superhero. TV show yeah. that makes that pokes fun now, itself, but yeah. not too bad to not where it becomes bad, where silly. It's, it's funny. Wasn't it yeah. like a primetime <clears throat> show in the late nineties? Like, it didn't they did show get it a live like action. Like, like a live action. No, no, no. Oh, like okay. it wasn't it like either six or seven o'clock at night, like with the Simpsons or something on Fox on Sunday nights Maybe. or something. No, I think this came out on Saturdays. I want to say, it? I, if I remember right, well, we're gonna I, let's ask Mister Nineties. Well, no, but I remember always seeing it on Saturday. I could be, I could be thinking of something. Like I said, I can't remember either, but I. I would think it was. I think it was a Saturday morning cartoon. I don't remember seeing it on Sunday night. But it was prime stuff for me. I love the Tick. I could be wrong about everything that. about it. But no, the Tick, man, what a home run! Okay, so before we get to our number one, let's go ahead and do some honorable mentions. I'm kind of surprised I didn't hear X Men from either. It's one It's an of honorable you. mention. I just okay. don't have enough room, man. I mean, like okay, I got yeah, it. okay. I, I, I agree. So we all that. agree it's a great cartoon. Da -da 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 -da. It's fantastic. I mean, it's our opening like, montage. Yeah. Right? I mean, we, that, we didn't even pick it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that cartoon is it's quintessential X Men. Like uh, as far as uh, the con all the con X Men comic books I've ever written, the cartoon in the '90s was very faithful to that stuff and faithful to those characters I thought and it was good storylines back off bub I just uh, like yeah. you said there's no, just not good. enough room there's other that's ones right. like you know, right. but you know X-Men cartoon was money because I mean but that was before Pokemon and you know KB Toys was overrun with X-Men toys I remember yeah, I had this so giant well I had this giant uh, Wolverine when I was like seven and you'd push the 
push a button in his chest and he would say stuff from the cartoon. That's funny. Well, kind of like Spider-Man, though. Spider-Man's the same way. That was a yeah. great 90s cartoon. You know, movie. I never watched Spider-Man. It, it was, was, it was good. It was yeah. good. But listeners, join me on this crusade. And if you can find an episode where Spider-Man punches someone, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to make your own video of you dressed as Spider-Man punching that somebody... That might be what happens. We'll That's watch a... that, too. Here's yes. The, yes, here's what's going to happen. We'll if no show one that finds, live on the podcast. If no there one listens to this... Uh, if no one that if just listening to this podcast finds an episode of Spider-Man punching someone in the Spider-Man series that ran in the 90s, we will make a live-action Spider-Man punching someone. <laughs> wow. The Samuel Flames crew there. will do What other type of honorable mentions do right, Well, my, if my brother was here, he would mention... Bobby's World, oh, yeah, uh, Howie Bobby's Mandel's World. cartoon. Yeah. He really liked that. Life with Louie. Life with Louie. Um, I know, that was kind of freaky. Uh, but then, of course, if the missus was here right now, Doug would be her number one. Okay, I want to talk about that uh, right now, one. then. Because she loved Doug. She loved Quail Man. In the 90s, for a, just uh, just for a brief segment, talk about this. In the 90s, when, when I was a kid, you were either a Cartoon Network kid or you were a Nickelodeon kid, and you hated one or the other. <clears throat> you I agree like Star with that. Trek and Star Wars. It really was. It was a Star Trek Star Wars thing because, like, I remember, um, you know, if it's like, oh yeah, do you watch? Are you afraid of dark? I'm like, God no, that's not a cartoon, you idiot. Yeah, I'm a Goosebumps man. <laughs> yeah, Goosebumps is far superior. <laughs> <laughs> you pull up your shirt and show your show your yeah. goose, Goosebumps the forever. Stein G. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at my Stein tag. So, so I pull up, pull up my Jansport backpack and I got a Scholastic Goosebumps book. <laughs> <laughs> my stories come from books, nerd. <laughs> put a, put a so, temporary. So honorable mentions. Oh Bravo. gosh! Okay. Uh, oh, SWAT cats! If you watch SWAT cats, I love SWAT cats. Do you guys know what that is? No. No, yeah. but I like how many times you said SWAT cats in like three seconds. Can't stop saying SWAT cats because SWAT cats <laughs> is such a great show called SWAT cats. SWAT cats. SWAT cats takes place in a um a town called Mega Cat City. There are these two cats called T Bone and Razor. Are they SWAT cats? They're SWAT cats, and they uh, have this badass like Harrier jet, and they fly around and destroy villains. Rarely are their villains giant. Well, I don't know, no, a lot of them are, but a lot of times it's just them flying around in their jet. Did the Swat huh. Cats punch people? Oh, yeah, they did. They <laughs> punched, kicked, and blew people up with missiles. That's, wow. Because that's how Hanna Barbera rolls. <laughs> Man, where are they when we need them now? <laughs> no time for purrs and pats, these guys. <laughs> but, anyways, no, I, I love Swat Cats. Swat um, cats. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of course. The new 90s one I heard was good. I never watched the new 90s one. It was was good. good. I like the 90s one. Um, Oh, God. I've just got so many honorable mentions to to go through. You know, Powerpuff Girls. I mentioned that before. I watched Powerpuff Girls. Um, Mikey? My biggest honorable mention uh, actually started in the 80s, but it started in the late 80s, and the majority of it was in the 90s, and that was the Garfield and Friends. I liked Garfield and Friends, yeah. Uh, That would also be on the Mrs. Oh, uh, Uh, because that and because U.S. Acres, both Garfield, the first half, and U.S. Acres, second half, were very funny to me. Well, before we talk about our collective number one, which is really my number two, because Animaniacs is my number one, I feel like our number one deserves a present. So, CJ, I brought a present for you. Uh-oh. Live, Uh-oh. Live on, the air. on the air. Surprise he does not know about. All right, open it up, and you when guys, you see it, you have to say what it is. I'm going to have to keep up with you guys. Matt had a surprise last time. This guy's Let's Dig a... your hand in that J. Crew bag. I know. Is, oh it a, is it a necktie? It's not. Bacon socks. I'm not really doing this for suspense. I'm really having a hard time with it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah! All right! <laughs> Haters, this is the Predator triple feature. And guess what's on it in Blu-ray? Predator 2! <laughs> so that's right. You can sit there and hate on Predator 2 while I watch it. Danny Glover get tired of this shit in Blu-ray! <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Found that sucker for $8 on Amazon. It's got Predator 1, Predator 2, and Predators. Good Lord. I'm going to get drunk and watch this tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So now, here we go. Yes, we're watching this tonight. Let's go over this to yes. number one. Thank you. Number one. Uh, you know what? Let's let our 90s guy do the privileges. Name number one. <sighs> number one is Batman the Animated Series. Hands down. Without a shadow of a doubt. Down. Okay? 
I actually got to go to Comic Con with this guy right over here. This guy? This guy! That's my guy! My guy! Right there! We got to go to Comic Con, and I got to sit in on the Kevin Conroy, his panel, and he got to talk about Batman the Animated Series. And he talked about how they, you know, everything was hand drawn in this show, it was hand painted, everything was. Mm hmm. And when he and Mark Hamill agreed to do this, they didn't know what they were doing. They were just voicing it. Because he said they voiced right. it, then they animated it around the script. So he said they would get in the studio, they would voice it, and they had no idea what they were what they were voicing for, if it was going to be good, if it was going to be bad, whatever. Right. Um, you know, and so, you know, he was talking about, he was recalling when him when he and Mark Hamill first sat down in their screening room and they watched this. They didn't know what to expect. But here comes this dark image, this, like, sunset with this brilliant score because Warner Brothers oh, yeah. had the orchestra for every cartoon. Oh yeah. This brilliant score opens up with Batman. He's he's it's the most oh, it's the, still to me one of the best openings to any cartoon I agree. I've ever seen. It's it's perfect and it captures this almost like noir vibe without almost like you you kind of second guess yourself while you're watching you're like does this take place in the 40s or what but it's one of the coolest got the, the best voice acting Mark Hamill is the Joker. That's true. And uh, Batman, I can't say enough about this series. I look forward to it every day. It, it was it it really took cartoons to a whole new level for me. And still today, I, I bought them all, watched them, loved them. Uh, Grundle here actually convinced me to watch Batman Beyond because I didn't want to. Oh, but then good. I, after rewatching the original Batman, I said, "Well, I guess I'll give Batman Beyond a try because it's an extension of exactly. Batman, just as good, just as good, yep. just as good, fantastic." Return of the Joker. Your mouth is open. Dude, the Return of the time. Joker is still one of the most like But you look at the Batman animated movies, to be honest. Master of the Phantasm. Master of the Phantasm. Sub Zero. Sub Zero. Fantastic. Um They these, did punch people in those cartoons. They punched the a lot of people. <laughs> that is still, in my opinion, one of the it, it will be the best cartoon. I don't think the cartoons can get any better. They, I mean, they really I was. mean best cartoon overall. Any decade, Batman the animated Batman series to me is the pinnacle of like it is. It, it's it's the culmination of great voice acting and just very painstaking attention to detail. An amazing screen. story, great story, and it was for teenagers. Yeah. Obviously, this cartoon was for teenagers, but younger kids enjoy it. My little nephew always, when he comes over, he doesn't want to play games. He doesn't want to do anything. He wants to watch Batman. Yeah. Because he knows I have them all, and he just wants to watch them. And he falls asleep during most of it anyway, but he just loves Batman. And, and yeah. he loves all the... Ba but they're scary? They are. They're when dark. Clayface turns into Clayface, like his origin story, that scared me. His flesh dripping off. Yeah. Just graphic stuff. Killer Croc used to scare me a little bit. I know. They all did. They were. It was such a great cartoon. And to be honest, like there were some times when Joker would scare you a little bit because he would just, you know, he would laugh. There was an episode where he was trying to infect the whole city I'm, with this. I'm yeah. telling you, it's his yellow teeth. Yeah. They never made his teeth white. Really? Remember, they were yellowish. They were. You're right. And it added some kind of menacing little. For me, it did. It made it was in dirty. His teeth. But yeah. of course, yeah. But of course, Mark Hamill's voice was also good too. Right. But the look they it, gave well, it, was Joker. A, it was a good um, juxtaposition of his face, you know, because his face was so white that if the uh, his teeth That's were true. white, so That's yeah. true. It, it could good. have been for cartoon purposes. And, yeah. But then there were also like his cerebral episodes. There was the one that had the. It was the guy with the clocks. I don't remember the name of it though. Clock King. The Clock King. Yeah. He had the Clock King episode, and it was really cerebral. You know, yeah. and then it, it wasn't like a whole lot of action, but it was Batman trying to, you know, just race against the clock the whole time. And it right, was, it was great. It was, it was fantastic. Really, honestly, that to me, I, I really, and even everything they, about Batman. Yeah. I mean, even when they expanded and, and they brought in Robin, because the, when they brought in the older, like the teenage Dick Grayson, he was a darker character. Yeah, he was know? a darker character. Nightwing. This is all in the uh, fourth season. Yep. It kind of jumps a little bit, and you, you get lost at first. Yeah. Because the fourth season, I'll be honest, I didn't grow up watching. I was gone by then. I'd grown up out of ca cartoons, so I didn't watch the fourth season. So watching the fourth season, again, yeah, I was like, what's going on? If you hang in there in the middle of the season, they'll give you what you missed. They'll tell you what's going on, right? And it's a fantastic story. But up, the, up into Batman Beyond, it is great. Yeah, and if you haven't watched Return of the Joker... Go watch it. Do yourself a favor. But don't watch it with kids. Don't watch it with kids. There's actually two versions of Return of the Joker. The one, is there really? There are. You can buy the one that is unedited, and you can buy the one that is. Because it edited. is. It is. A it's little dark. dark. It's, it's up there with uh, um, Batman Dark Knight Returns. That um, it is dark. Yeah, it is dark. But fantastic, fantastic cartoon Mikey, series. Talk about that, man. Um, 
what you said. <laughs> so before we go, uh, Grundle here wants to talk about Eastern cartoons, and we'll go ahead and let him, since he is our expert in that. He okay. is. So go so, ahead. We talked about earlier how Pokemon came in take over the uh, the American you know culture. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yes. Did you catch them all? Uh, yes, I did actually. In the blue version. And my brother caught an extra one because his game was defective. We sent it back to Nintendo. They sent him the game with all Pokemon, level 70, at the very beginning. He could go back through and play it. There was one of the guys that we talked to. He said, I'm going to send you a new copy of, of version red. That is not the answer I expected. That's yeah. great. Yeah. No, they, they get my brother. My brother called them all plus one. There was one, something called wow. the, the missing number or whatever. It was a glitch in the that, system. And that's why this man is an expert on the Eastern culture because he has caught them all I called plus them all. one. I, I called them all back in the 90s. I don't know. There's like 300 now. and Some of them look like robots and they're stupid. But um, when they looked like animals and it was, you know, yeah. And it kind of felt like you were doing like an underground, you know, Cockfighting thing. It was Pikachu. Yeah. So, but no, I did catch them all. I did. Uh, okay. And Nintendo would would help you if you got defect, and that's why Nintendo. I'm such a Nintendo fanboy. But here we go. Pokemon kind of helped fascinate the uh, uh, the Western culture with the Eastern animation, and then here comes Cartoon Network with an idea. Tsunami. For those of you who don't know what Tsunami actually means, it's kind of a blending of the word toon and tsunami because they're bringing some Eastern action cartoons to the uh, to the West. <clears throat> so action cartoons weren't like a, a, a um, something that Cartoon Network wasn't accustomed to. They had some action cartoons. They had um, you know Space Ghost, uh, not the Coast to Coast. They had Space Ghost. They had Birdman. They they played some He Man. They had Pirates of Dark Water, which we've mentioned in our Hanna Barbera, mm -hmm. uh, and they had uh, Johnny Quest. And I'll even throw Hong Kong Fooey in there as an action cartoon because I love Hong Kong Fooey. He's awesome. He's the number one super guy. Yeah. And um, so he had those action cartoons, and, and they were no stranger to that. But here comes Tsunami with the host Moltar. And it was the Moltar that they kind of took him away from Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Mm -hmm. Moltar's hosting Tsunami in 1997 is when it starts <clears> to air. <throat> and alongside Space Ghost Coast to Coast, you had Cartoon Planet, which was a kid-friendly version of Coast to Coast. And they had the character Brack which was a, another kind of cult favorite. Speaking of planets, I, why didn't anybody name Captain Planet for their best 90s cartoon? You know what? I grew up in the 90s. I hated Captain Planet. For obvious reasons. That's why. Carry on. I did like the toys, though. <laughs> Toonami, in my opinion, is responsible for bringing the majority of Eastern animation popularity to West. Because when Dragon Ball Z showed up in 98 on Cartoon Network, on Toonami, when I went to my Suncoast video in the mall, Dragon Ball Z VHS was there. And they were probably all like $119.99. No, no, they were cheap. Was, these are VHS cassettes, man. I know, VHS cassettes were like expensive. I don't know, man. I would, I would go clean my grandma's house and I'd be able to buy one. But anyways, so I would go there and then, you know, next to the next to Dragon Ball Z, you had some Sailor Moon and you had all this stuff. And then, I just have to say it, Toonami is one of the best in collaborations of anything that's on any network television because I wouldn't know anything about some of the best, most interesting stories because animation over there is really more adult-oriented. Mm -hmm. It really is. And if you go back and you look at some of the American car action cartoons like, Trans uh, you know, like Thundercats and you have some of the Eastern ones like Dragon Ball, which was out in the 80s, the characters moved different over there than they did right. here. Yeah. It was new, it was exciting, it was thrilling. So then you have Dragon Ball Z, you have other, uh, and Dragon Ball Z actually came on Fox about 5 in the morning if you were getting ready, packing your Lunchable for school. It came on about 6 o'clock in the morning. Fox Kids. So uh, anyway, so you had Toonami, brought over Dragon Ball Z, and introduced this, me to a lot of anime from there. And we talked about Reboot. Reboot, it's just, oh it's special gosh, to me. it's horrible. And then, uh, you know, Gundam Wing, you had Voltron. Ronin Warriors, I'm going to shout that out again. And, uh, you know, the uh, the Gundam series was... Uh, well, I'll touch on that again. Gundam Wing. And then you had 8th MS Team. Roroni Kenshin. Tenshi Muyo. Outlaw Star. Uh, some of the best things. I will put Dragon Ball Z as my top one. But, um, I mean, I could talk about that forever. I really could. And, uh, shout before we end this podcast, shouts out to Kevin Conroy for being one of the coolest voice actors I've ever met. Oh, yeah. Def definitely an awesome guy to me. He's definitely been, an awesome guy. He's, he was he had the longest line at Comic-Con, and he sat there and signed everything. <clears throat> Stayed late, too. He did. All right, folks. That is all the time we have for today. We will see you next week 
on another Saturday morning Samo Flange. Where'd you go, guys? I'm all alone. Alright. Guess I'll leave now. I'm gonna go play Donkey Kong. Anybody got some quarters? I can put it on free mode.